some level, my life has been wasted on me. After all, if I can't remember it, who can? Good morning, it's my second day in Madrid. And today I'm planning on going to the National Library, like walk around neighborhoods whenever it's not raining. As far as the museum I went to yesterday, it was so nice and so gorgeous. I recognized some of the artists in there, which was so exciting for me because that makes the paintings like more interesting. For example, I recognize like Velazquez. He had a bunch of paintings in there, including some of the work he did when he was living with the Medici family who had funded the beginning of the European Renaissance, I believe. And there were just like a million paintings Madonna and Child, Christian motifs in general. I was reading one of the panels and it said, Wask has actually strayed away from religious paintings in his career. But the thing is that religious paintings were um, parts of churches and they were more likely to be saved, which is why we have a lot of them today still, because they were more likely to be preserved. Also, they were likely to be funded as well. Like a lot of these artists were getting paid for their work or they were being commissioned for their work by wealthy families, including the Medici family. There are a bunch of paintings I really, really liked. Um, I want to talk more about them, but I have to go through my camera footage and photos to look at them and remember why I like them. So I will do that soon. It has been yet another rainy day in London. Wait, what the hell? No. It has been yet another rainy day in Madrid, but that's not something I am upset about. I think for the most part, the rain was mostly like a heavy drizzle, so it didn't make the experience of being here too uncomfortable. Today, I went to the museum that begins with a TH. That was the main thing I did today. Uh, so I went to the second museum today. In comparison to the first one, the first one is huge, the building's gorgeous. It's a bit of a maze, so it's like hard to know if you saw everything unless you really like follow the map and you see where you went. So like if you would go, make sure you like kind of a list of the paintings or the artists you want to see and then go to those rooms especially, but it's hard to like see everything and it's huge. So the first museum yesterday, Museo del Prado, was very like Renaissance heavy, Medici family, Madonna and child, think of that stuff. And then today there was a whole mix of artists. I saw artists I don't know, but I also saw my man Munch, I saw his piece, the guy from Norway who did The Scream, and a lot of other work I really, really like. I saw Max Liberstein, I think his name is. He's the German painter whose work I really loved in Berlin. There were also a bunch of other paintings that I really, really loved. I'm glad I got to see them. I'm looking back at some of the paintings I really liked. I took photos on my phone as well as on my camera. It's really cool when an artist has a distinct style, you can tell that it's their work. And I think Munch definitely has that, as well as like um, Picasso and Van Gogh. And I actually saw Van Gogh today. The funniest thing though was like, occasionally there would be a wall that was empty and clearly there's supposed to be a piece of art there. So they put a piece of paper and then they say like, this art is supposed to be a part of this exhibition, but right now it's in the MoMA in New York City or something like that. So it's not here anymore, but it's supposed to be here. What if I printed a piece of paper and put that on my wall? You know what I mean? I could just put that on my wall and say, oh, this is supposed to be here, but it's not right now. It's a cute attempt to keep the exhibit like as large as possible, I guess. I also saw Georgia O'Keeffe, which was cool. She painted this building, which is supposed to be a street on New York with the moon. I don't know like what she, she's talking about, but very cool. I just love like her work is so well blended. It's something really difficult to achieve. She always has these like seamless, seamless brush strokes. Ah, I liked this one too. This was Richard Estes. This was part of the hyperrealism collection here. This was a self-portrait near the World Trade Center. He used acrylic, I believe, to paint this. And it was so cool. Like, I genuinely thought it was a photograph, but that's what hyperrealism is, right? And it was cool because he, like, took a photo of himself in the reflection and then painted it. Which I love, like, outdoor reflections because 
it's very voyeuristic and to see yourself in public sometimes can be jarring and I'm like ah okay I think that's part of the reason like with the rise of authenticity on Instagram and apps like Be Real, people who take like outdoor selfies, it's a way of like performing authenticity because I'm out and about, I'm not like posing and someone else isn't taking the photo of me. It's like me capturing myself, but also it's out and about. So it's in like a, like you can't change where the mirror is. It's in a very like set position that makes it feel more authentic, I think, even though it's a performance of authenticity. I also want to look into some artists after this. I think that's one of the cool parts about museums is that you'll discover these artists you like and you get an instant connection with the work, which would not be there necessarily if you saw it through a screen. So this one artist, Edward Hopper from Nyack, New York, he painted this painting called Hotel Room and the description says, The solitude of modern cities was one of the central themes of Hopper's work. In this large canvas, the first of his series set in hotels, a young woman in her underclothing stares at a piece of paper, a train timetable we are told by the artist's wife. The engrossed figure contrasts with the depersonalized room where a powerful overhead light illuminates intense color panels. I'm interested in paintings about modernity and isolation, so that goes hand in hand. And then there was other paintings that were just so gorgeous, like people that use colors really well. A lot of artists from Paris, and I've been like seeing in these museums, a lot of artists love to go to Paris as it's either a hub of art or a hub of artists, or it's a very inspiring city. And it's cool to see like the same city from different perspectives, especially when you've been there and then you have your own perspective on it. Or once you see all this media or these paintings or works around this one city, and then you visit it and you see like, do I recognize this from what I've seen before? Because I remember when I had been to Paris, I actually like recognized the Metro from a short film by the Coen brothers. And then I ate at the cafe and then I went to the Picasso Chanel collab exhibition at that same museum. Honestly, I did not like this exhibit. I'm not a huge fan of Picasso. I don't know, like I understand kind of, but I don't really like his work that much. For me, that was already like, a low expectation situation, but then it felt like they just put together the randomest collab of Chanel and Pablo Picasso. It was as random as like the Obama and Elton John podcast, or is it the Obama and Billy Joel podcast? I don't know. Just so random. But like reading the descriptions, I saw, okay, it's like Chanel was inspired by cubism in their design. And then Pablo Picasso obviously did a lot of cubism as well in his artwork. And then his first wife, Olga, wore like Chanel sometimes and he painted her in Chanel sometimes. I didn't really love that exhibition too much. I honestly went through it so quickly, but I got some postcards, which was fun. I ate at the museum, just like a very mediocre museum meal. Yesterday when I had finished my painting in the park, it was like nice to see like something I liked back at myself, but also a lot of my art life does fail. Like it just isn't what I expected or isn't as good as I want. That's a very normal part about art. And it's easy to forget like that art isn't always perfect. I really enjoyed Retiro Park yesterday or Parque de Retiro. I think that was really nice. After that, I went to a cafe and I painted and I finished my painting. So I did two studies while I was here. The train painting, I'm really proud of. I think I got the colors right and it's small and it's cute. So maybe tomorrow when I'm in Amsterdam. Tomorrow I'll be in Amsterdam. Just a casual sentence coming out of my mouth. Tomorrow when I'll be in Amsterdam, maybe I will paint some more depending on what I feel like doing. Then I just came back to my hotel and I'm gonna get dinner after this. Did I hit record? Okay. Yesterday I was eating at this restaurant and I didn't realize it was gonna be like kind of fancy. But then I was reading my book. I remember nothing nor Efron while I was eating dinner. And I dropped it in the paella and it was greasy on the front. The Nora Efron book is honestly, I've read much better um, memoirs and stuff, but it's funny. I will say that it's very funny. I know who Nora Efron is, but I don't know her that well. Like I know she's a Harry Met Sally person or Sleepless in Seattle or both. I, I think she is a Harry Met Sally person. Like I've watched that. I don't really like that movie that much to be honest. But one of the quotes I really liked in this book was on page 22. She's been talking about how she can't remember anything and that's what this book is called. I remember nothing. Uh, she can't remember things because of her age. And she says, on some level, my life has been wasted on me. After all, if I can't remember it, who can? And that quote got me thinking because I was like, that's exactly why I want to write stuff down. Like I want to remember my life 
my camera had just run out of space, so I was clearing it right now. I was saying that this Nora Ephron quote really made me think about like, yeah, that's why I make videos. I want to remember these things in my life. And it's also that if I don't remember my life, no one's gonna care, you know? I have to learn from my own life. I think like I'm the best person to learn from because I'm the one that went through the things that I did. I know myself the best, hopefully. Uh oh, I'm falling in love. Last night I watched Intergalactic, which is Kid Cudi's Netflix movie. And it was so good. Like the story felt so real. It's definitely about like modern love, miscommunications and technology. And then I really liked how the music was integrated into the, the movie because it gives you like an exciting way to interact with the music. And I kind of have more patience when I listen to music in a movie than when I do in an album form. But lately I've actually had an increasing <laughs> attention span for albums, which is nice because I usually don't have that, unfortunately. Every time a song was introduced, I could like absorb it. And it was really, really funny. And the animation style was also so beautiful. It definitely reminded me a lot of like Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. The style was awesome. The characters were so funny. I only know a little bit of Kid Cudi's music, Man on the Moon Part 2, the orange and purple cover, and I actually painted him once. I love the art on that cover. And this one was also like inspiring to watch as someone who's trying to get back into art, just admiring all the beauty. Here are some of the bops I like in Intergalactic. The problem I'm finding with the vegan scene in Madrid is that a lot of it is fast food based. It's very like vegan burgers and I'm like, I, I don't like that stuff unfortunately and things here tend to be salty but not very flavorful. For me, that's like a huge downside of being here and I've been to Santiago, Barcelona, Madrid this year and all three of them, the food was just not that great. Santiago was surprisingly the best but that could be because I figured out where the best spots were because I was there the longest. In each city, I went to the chain udon. I know what I like there. I like one of the vegan yaki udon dishes. Their ramen, whatever, but their udon, vegan one, very good. I ate there like three days in a row. <laughs> Twice in Barcelona, once in Madrid, because I was just thinking it's so good. It's raining in Madrid, but I'm having a good time. After I thrifted a bit, it was raining. So I decided to stay indoors to some more thrift stores, but I will say the rain makes everything really gorgeous. It's like, you know when it rains and all of a sudden it's like you put on a new pair of glasses where everything is super clear. It's gorgeous with the reflections. It feels like someone has removed the fog out of the air that makes everything crisper and more vibrant to, your, to my senses at least. A greenery always pops out a lot after the rain to me. So today when I was on the street with the museums, I think it must be like Calle de Prado, something like that. It was so gorgeous and I was like, oh my god, I'm so glad I came to Madrid. This was so nice. I got to relax, I got to paint. Ugh. The rain has made things so gorgeous in Madrid. Not only has it made the greenery in daylight vibrant, but it has also made all the reflections in the city like onto the street. Any bright light will be reflected. Like every pharmacy has that green plus sign and then it is so huge and so bright so it reflects on the street for like meters and meters and it's so gorgeous and I'm like oh it's good weather and like today was warmer than yesterday and it was still raining like not very much very like sparkle rain it made the street sparkle I finished the Nora Ephron book by the way that's like the fastest I've read a book, especially for a book I really didn't like. That is like a 3 out of 10. I don't know who let her publish this book, but of course, like, it, it was funny. I expected it to be funnier. Like, I can still appreciate something that is funny, but not like a great story, like Guardians of the Galaxy 1, but I couldn't even appreciate it that much for that. Like, the charm wore off quick. And I also finished Bell Hooks, Ain't I a Woman. Very, very good. She has like these amazing phrases. The way she like puts things together is amazing. Some examples would be, I think, how she talked about like men unifying. Men have this like bond over oppressing women. I thought that was one of the like best 
sections of the book and each part of the book is split up by different topics and essays including the devaluation of black femininity or black womanhood i believe it's called and another one about like black feminism and she criticizes how the first and second wave feminist movements i believe it is they were all about white women. When people would write about feminism, they'd talk about white women's feminism, and it is racist to exclude black women from this narrative. I have um, two other books. I have The Buried Giant by Kazuo Ishiguro, and I have with me the Adrian Rich book. I think I'm gonna read The Buried Giant. I'm gonna shower now, get ready for tomorrow because I have a flight in the morning, then I get to Amsterdam, and then I'll have dinner, and then I'll be sleeping. All inside our Amsterdam she hides Watery eyes Not howling when she's waving high Her other 